Um, so good evening, everybody. Welcome to today's uh, health session. As usual, on Sunday, we meet and we talk about health. Uh, my name is Fred Gishuki. Uh, today, we have an exciting, exciting talk um, about cancer, about how to manage it, how to prevent it. Uh, this is a, a disease that has affected so many people's lives. And uh, we really need to look at it and see how can we prevent ourselves from getting it and how can we be able to manage it. So with us today is one of our great leaders in the company. These are very well established director in our company and uh, she's a lady who has a lot of wealth of experience in the wellness industry. She's been with us for many, many years and uh, has been able to make a positive difference in so many people's lives. So without further ado, I'm going to welcome Gladys Jura to take it away, Gladys. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fred. Uh, it's another amazing day that the Lord has given us. And um, I'm privileged to be the one to talk to you about this topic. It's quite a sensitive topic, I can tell you for sure, considering that um, so many of us in the society, in Africa, in the world, are getting afflicted by this challenge. And it's one of the most sensitive topics that anyone can talk about. Even when the doctor brings the news, it's one of the hardest things that people take, uh, internalize, and even the, walking the journey is quite, it's quite a journey. So ours is to look at the preventive part and management just in case somebody is challenged, because at the end of the day, these things are part of life. And then being part of life, then we have to find a way to be able to, to take care of ourselves and also, even for, as a caregiver, how are you able to handle it if somebody near you or somebody very close to you is going through that uh, situation? So my name is Gladys Njura. I'm very, very excited um, business builder in the health and wellness industry, preventive health. And for me, it came as a by the way, because I'm a trained teacher. I've worked in the banking industry. And then somebody told me, Gladys, I've met an American company where we can be part of. And while we are in that, we can be able to make some money and travel the world. Little did I know that the real um, foundation of this big, big, huge multinational company is on matters health. So I remember going to my second meeting and a health talk was done. And I can tell you for sure that changed my life completely, completely. And um, on attending the first meeting and a presentation was made on basic prevention of health, I found myself, um, I found myself very mesmerized by the information, I can tell you for sure. And I made a conscious decision that day that I'm going to make a change because as a mother, when you realize that you're, when you realize that you're messing up, then you just have to do something about it. So uh, at that time, I met Neo like 20 years ago. And at that time, I had young children. My firstborn was nine. Now she's turning 29 in a few in next month. And the small one was three. And now she's turning 23 in next month. And I realized that I had messed up as a mother. And I needed to change that. And along the way, I have learned a lot. I've attended hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trainings. I've read a lot of book work. And this is one of the topics that is really close to my heart because cancer is one of the most expensive, um, it's one of the most expensive diseases to handle. And besides me being uh, very expensive, it's equally very traumatizing and it's painful. And it's quite, it takes the long haul, both for the patient and the caregivers. And uh, while I'm talking, I want to make a disclaimer. We are not here to say that we cure cancer because we do not. We are here to say that it's preventable because we all went to school. And I remember we were told that prevention is better than cure. So for each one of us on the call, the call today is about prevention. And just in case, it could be growing in us 
And we don't know. When you take certain measures, the body is gracious enough to repair and regenerate itself. So for me, I'll be talking about prevention, regenerating, and for those who already have it, what can they do to make their life easier and to be able to actually live a longer life and to even uh, do something that is very critical to avoid it coming back. You know, when it comes back, it comes back in a very uh, violent manner. So we need to know that we can be able to, to take care of ourselves if we have it so that it doesn't recur. So um, from the beginning, we all know that at least the greatest wealth that we can have is our health. I'm not talking about matters spiritual. I'm talking about matters down here on earth where we are very focused about money and so many other things. Beyond all those, each one of us health should be very critical. So for you being here, you're investing in yourself, your family and the people around you to learn about health. But I want to also encourage you that learning about health is not a one day venture. And that is where we are here every Sunday. It's, it's not an easy task, but we are here every Sunday trying to learn as much as we can about the various areas of health because health is very wide. So uh, the first thing we need to know is how do we maintain general health? But before we go, go there, it's important to know that statistics have been warning us and giving us red lights for a very long time. One of the things is that the World Health Organization, some years back, actually gave a, a red flag that, um, it gave a red flag that uh, the world is losing this battle of health. And that is the World Health Organization talking. And they projected that chronic, chronic diseases or rather lifestyle diseases would increase by 15% globally between 2010 and, and 2020. And actually one of the, the things they said is that out of every four deaths that will happen in the world in the coming years, three of them, will come from these chronic diseases you can see there, whether it's heart disease, cancer, respiratory issues, stroke, Alzheimer's, diabetes, chronic kidney diseases, and quite a number of others that may not be mentioned here. So we need to know that chronic disease is part of our life today, but what is it that we can do about it? So I'll be talking about cancer today, and cancer is just, um, as we move on, it's just a formation of abnormal cells, that grow so fast and aggressively and build into tumors. And those tumors can starve off the body of very vital uh, nutrients. And they can also grow and manifest in many parts of the body and therefore really messing up the metabolism of the body and how um, healthy you should be. So basically we need to know that and um, cancers usually are very, very aggressive and they are very dangerous. And I'm not just talking about tumors because some tumors are benign. A benign tumor is not, is not very dangerous like a cancerous tumor. So that's one thing we need to know. So when we are talking about cancer, uh, we need to know that it is where cells actually mutate the DNA. I know we've all learned about the nucleus of a cell, whereby the, 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 the center of the cell, because of many aggressions that come to affect it, it affects the DNA. And that means when that now that cell is going to mutate, it is going to mutate as a, an abnormal cell. And an abnormal cell ends up dividing much faster, more in, in more ways than just a normal cell. And eventually those cells group together and they, 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 they actually form a tumor. And in the process, those tumors can mutate. So it begins just as, just giving an example of that one cell, where that one cell actually becomes unhealthy. And eventually we see the, the, the formation of many more and they form a tumor and be, it becomes a problem. And uh, one of the challenges about cancer is that it metastasizes. That means that it can spread to other parts of the body. It could have been in one area contained, contained for many years, but along the way, it breaks itself up and it moves on through the bloodstream or through other various ways 
and it is transported to other parts of the body. And when that happens, actually, it really gives the doctors a hard time when it has actually gone to other, to settle in other parts of the body and starts growing in those other parts of the body. So we need to know that um, each one of us has capacity or maybe having cancer cells. We all are candidates of having cancer cells in our bodies, but the, the goal is not to, to feed them. We need to starve them and not keep feeding them because there are things that actually feed them more. And that is what we are here to learn about. So when it comes to cancer, there are many types of cancers, quite a number of them. Uh, but basically, the ones that are really, really very common to us are things like the breast cancer, the cervical cancer, lung cancer, prostate, pancreatic, stomach, colon, maybe skin. I mean, leukemia. Leukemia is the cancer of the, of the blood, brain tumor. Some of those things are, some of those cancers are very, very common and others may be very, very rare, but there are many, many types in the body and only the doctors can be able to tell at which place they are, the organs they are, and then they are able to fight them from that uh, place on. What causes cancer? Well, there are many factors. One could be biological or internal. Other causes could be age. For example, as men age, their prostate enlarges. And over time, if it's not taken care of, that kind of enlargement could turn cancerous. And that happens more as men age. So you find that when it comes like to prostate cancer, it's more prevalent to eld more people who are more elderly in terms of the men uh, than, than the younger ones. Gender can also be a factor. For example, most breast cancers are more prevalent in women than in men. And I'm not saying that some men don't get, some men do get breast cancer, but it's more prevalent on women. And of course, there are, there are others that are inherited genetic. Uh, what is happening is that uh, depending with the family you come from, there could be a, a DNA factor, a generic factor that gives you a likelihood of getting that kind of cancer. But that doesn't mean you cannot do something about it. So like if you live in a family where those types of challenges have been found, then you need to be very serious and careful about it so that you can handle that well. Others could be environmental, like exposing yourself carelessly to the hot, scorching sun, you know? It, it's the sun gives us the UV rays that causes radiation. That could also be a factor. And not to mention others that could be carcinogenic or radioactive materials and chemicals. We may be using a lot of products that have asbestos. That, um, that aspect of it, the as asbestos, if I remember the, to say it right, if you find materials that have that, you need to make sure that you, 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 you stop using materials that could be having that. Not to mention the chemicals we are exposed to so much in Kenya. I mean, in the farm, there are so many chemicals that can affect the farmers. Even our own detergents could be an, uh, could be an, an avenue where we are taking in either internally or externally, because the skin is a breathing hog organ. There could be too many toxins every other time that they are being loaded into the body and that becomes a problem. Not to mention things like sprays and, and some medications and so many other things in the environment that could be a challenge for us. And of course, smokers. Smokers have a very high risk because the, the fact that they smoke a lot, that in itself could be a trigger to that. Then there's also the lifestyle related factors. One of those things could be you're not eating enough foods that fight off those cancerous cells. So it could be an issue of immunity. Maybe your immunity is low or you're not eating those kind of foods. And that could be quite a challenge. Moving on, we need to see what constitutes healthy diet. Because, I mean, one of the biggest factors that we can, we can help ourselves in is changing our eating habits as we also try to minimize those other factors we've talked about. If you go to a very scorching sun, 
Like if you're in Mombasa, people buy the sun lotion so that you, you prevent that direct heat on the, from the sun to your skin. And the skincare you're using, are you using a better skincare? The detergent you are using, can you get a friendly, an earth-friendly detergent, which is go green? Those solutions are there. The skincare you're using, the same thing. But when it comes to diet, there are some factors that can really help us in the fight for cancer and any other disease that is out there. So one of them is the diet. We are going to take some time to look at the diet. The other aspect is exercise. Why is exercise important? An oxygenated body is much better off to fight cancer cells and than an, an unoxygenated body. So we are saying that you need to be able to have breathing exercises and also have an exercise regime. When you exercise, you take in more oxygen and when the body is oxygenated, then that's a better environment for you to be able to take care of your cells and your organs. You know, that is very, very critical. So exercise is, is important, everyone on the call, it's for your own good, starting from the children. Teach them that once they grow up, they should not stop their exercise regime. And for you, whatever age you are in, try your very best, do what you can. On the minimum, at least we can walk. Brisk walking, you know, 15, 30 minutes, to and from, very, very important, it could help. The other one is sleep, why sleep? Sleep will help you reduce, or about exercise, I should have mentioned also about weight, because you're able to maintain your weight, because obesity can be another trigger for this challenge, some of these challenges, and of course, stress. When you exercise, you reduce your stress level. What about rest? We are told there's a recommended time of six to eight hours. Why is it so important, especially in the fight of chronic diseases? If you don't sleep enough hours, instead of the body resting and recuperating and repairing itself during sleep, it is going to emit some chemicals that are actually, that could be carcinogenic. So just know that taking very few hours of sleep in itself is an antidote for some of these challenges we are seeing. What about water? We all know that water is life. We are always told water is life, whether it's in the farm or inside our body. So it's important to take, everyone on the call should take a minimum of two liters of water daily. Is it easy? No, but it's critically important. But if you have a schedule of taking water, especially before meals, 20, 30 minutes before meals, the water will be able to help you flush the toxins, you know? And it will be able to make sure that your, 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 all your organs, all your cells are replenished with the amount of water that is ideal to keep your metabol you keep the body well metabolized, uh, the toxins are well taken care of, the blood is also supplied with enough water, and all the other functions that are in the body. What about sunlight? Sunlight is very important, especially the morning one before 12 because it gives us the best source of vitamin D and especially the D3. The D3, the best source of D3 is usually the sunlight. And it has been discovered that D3 is a very important vitamin for fighting cancer and boosting immunity and many other aspects in the body, not to mention even the absorption of calcium, magnesium. And you know, when people have cancer, one of the biggest areas that are affected is the bones. You know, they have a very hard time with the bones and they go through a lot of pain. Air, we've talked about um, exercising and it's important to make sure that you're within areas that have fresh, um, hair, fresh air, even when you're exercising, don't exercise along the road or where there are a lot of smokings and fumes. And if you stay with somebody who is stubborn and they are smoking, Make sure that as a rule, they go and smoke very far from where you are. Don't allow the people who smoke to smoke in the house because secondary smokers get affected more than even the real smoker because the smoke has no filter when it gets to you. Theirs at least has a bit of filter and I'm not saying it's any better. Of course, we all need to manage our weight, very, very critical. We need to manage our weight because weight in itself has its challenges, burdens the body. We all need to be between the 18.5 to 24.9 BMI factor. 
And you can talk to the person who invited you to understand more about it and also learn how to calculate it as a lay person. You know, as a lay person, you can be able to calculate your BMI. So let's talk about diet and I, I want to move a little bit faster. We realize that sometimes we're eating foods that are stripped out of the, 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 the real nutrients because we are eating a lot of foods that come from the shelves, from the shops. And even when we take them to the factories, we actually make sure that we remove the jam part and the husk part so that we have it tasting better, we have it staying longer, and that should not be the essence of life. That comfort of being able to just go to the shelf and pick a food that is lacking nutrition in itself is a bad thing. These are some of the foods that actually can increase the cancer cells to grow faster. What are some of the things that make cancer cells multiply faster? One, milk and things that have a lot of milk in them. Yeah. Uh, even when it comes to yogurt, it's better to do the natural yogurt more than the, the other one. The, there's one that is natural. It's much better. And uh, what, what happens with milk is it produces a lot of mucus within the body. And that mucus in itself is a cancer feeder. Not to mention the meats especially the treated meats. Treated meats are laced with a, a preservative called nitrate. And you can read more about it. The effects of nitrate can be very, very harmful to our body. And I know we are feeding our children with a lot of smokies and sausages and nyama bites and brones and bacon. You know, all these things, even in the supermarket, when you go, you find them there at the counter. When you overdo on some of these things, not to mention the sugars, you know, and the refined starch. Refined starch in itself is a sugar. And the funny, funny um, little snacks we are giving our children that have funny colors. All those colors are made from the factory. They are not natural, they are artificial. They are chemical. And that in itself is a challenge and the freezy drinks we are taking. Lots of sodas, lots of funny drinks that could be having all those challenges. Uh, so we are saying we need to learn how to eat well and avoid junk food. I know as human beings, we have that weakness where like today being a Sunday, most children are, are taken to go and eat junk. And it's exactly that, it's junk. And junk is junk. What does junk do? It's something bad. I don't even know why we glorify it. It's, it, it we glorify it and then it comes to hurt us in a very big way. And that begins even from a breastfeeding mother. From the moment you see, conceive a child, you need to be very careful on what you eat and don't give us the excuse of I'm craving. I'm craving ice cream. So you eat a lot of ice cream. What are you doing? You are messing with your baby. You're messing with that vital life that you love so much within you that you're eating harmful things and that is a story we need to, to shout out there in the marketplace. So we, we have what we call a healthy food pyramid. And uh, we are being told that we need to eat lots of whole grains. I'm going to give you homework. Go and read about the whole, why whole grains, whole wheat, whole maize, whole rice, barley, oats, so many things out there that form our main meals, including the breakfast, the lunch, and the dinner, and the mini meals. They need to be whole in themselves. When you're buying bread, is it reading whole? When you're buying unga, is it reading whole? Because refined, uh, refined whole grains, they themselves are sugars. It's sugar. And sugar, when it's in the body, I'll explain what it does in a few. Then we need lots of fruits and vegetables. These colors God gave us, he did not give them just for the sake of it. So in the fruits and vegetables, we have what we call the carotenoids, the flavonoids and the cruciferas. I'll be talking more about them. And you need that mix of the three. On the minimum, three carotenoids, two flavonoids, and one cruciferous. And when I give you those names later, I want you to jot them down or you take a screenshot and you go and read more about them. So that when you're doing your food choices, you are able to food, make sure that all those categories are represented. What about proteins? Proteins are bodybuilding. And once you become a grown up, you need to cut down on eating a lot of bodybuilding foods, especially so much the ones that come from the animal based proteins. They need to be eaten sparingly. And I'm not saying you stop eating them, 
That's not the essence. They need to be eaten sparingly. And, um, and then of course, what we call the animal, the plant-based proteins are better. I'll explain the reason why. And then of course, fats, sugar, sweets, they need to be reduced in terms of the intake. Now, when we look at the modern diet, the Western diet, you find that we've inverted this pyramid upside down. That we are doing a lot of fats and sugars, refined uh, starches and all, and many kind of uh, juices. And then of course the animal proteins, a lot of them, you can see them displayed there. And most of them are not even naturally grown. Like if it's chicken, it's not the road runner. If it's fish, some of it could be coming from the fish ponds. It's not the, the one that is growing in the wild out there. So the reason being now, these foods, the ones in the top two, they make the body acidic. If you didn't get anything else, just know that they make the body acidic. An acidic environment creates inflammation and an acidic environment feeds cancer cells more. That's why we are saying we need moderation. But these others here, they make the body alkaline. I'm sure we all went to school and we understood about an acid and alkaline, something acidic in a choma. Now that means it's not going to be good for your health and even for your children's health. Remember that. So what should we be doing? We are saying, let nutrition be your medicine. In fact, there's an old scientist many years ago and he candidly said, you either make your food your medicine or your medicine will be your food. I don't know what you'd like, uh, that to be, but starting today, we have a solution because you can help the body regenerate. So we are saying avoid excessive intake of animal proteins. Other than the white meats that are organically grown and, and the any zillas are kienyeji, those ones are much better. Avoid excessive intake of um, intake of fats, you know, and I, I wouldn't like to talk so loudly about this. Avoid things like margarines and bluebirds. Go more into the, the, the more natural ones like the peanut butter and the honey to lace into your children's bread and all that. Avoid the excessive intake of refined sugar and carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates. Avoid the intake of alcohol and things like smoking. Avoid stress. Avoid things like uh, caffeine. All those things are things we need to avoid. And then you increase more of the better carotenes, the fruits, the vegetables, the ones that have B6, C, E, all those things are antioxidants. And those antioxidants, they help the body fight. They increase the fighting power of the body. The folic acid, the omega-3 fatty acids, fiber, garlic, zinc, you know, all those things are very important to fight for you. Coenzyme 10. Very, very important. You can read more about that. And maybe you can take a screenshot on that because those are some of the things that you're going to educate your clients to be able to, I'm also taking that screenshot. I'm telling you at the end of the day, we need to educate our clients in the right way. And you're able to tell them what to take and what to avoid beginning with yourself. So now let's move very fast to the, the solution. Why should you think about supplementation? One, our foods are not being grown the way our grandparents did. We no longer mulch, we no longer use manure, we no longer use natural things in the farm. Everything we are using is artificial. So that means the soils are depleted of the foods we are talking about. And the harvesting, some foods are harvested when they are not even ready. They are not giving you the very best. Some foods get affected in the transportation and the cooking and the storage. All those challenges, they come to us. So what happened in 1958, New Life was founded after a research was done in the US by the government to find out why these chronic diseases were easy. So the founder um, and one of the scientists decided to come up with a solution. And that's the solution they have been giving since 1958 and they've been ratified all over the world. They are checked by the Global Science Network, all the serious, they work together with CDC, USDA, United States Department of Agriculture, National Cancer uh, Institute, all those organizations. They work in partnership, even on writing their own journals and publishing. 
you know? So these are scientists that are very well known in the world. If you want to know more about them, go to our New Life University, get to understand each one of them and their qualifications. And Dr. Ada First was the founder of the Scientific Advisory Board. And he was one of the first scientists ever to be given a Nobel Prize winner. I mean, a Nobel Prize because of uh, toxins, toxicology of the body, which is one of the cancer causes, and actually cancer. He is the one who gave the antidote for cancer treatment. Once cancer treatment is done, he realized the, the toxins affect the body more, reducing the immunity, and he came up with an antidote to remove those toxins after some months, once you are done with your chemo. So we have the member there who was a pioneer in cancer research and solutions. So now we are saying we have those 50, uh, 64 year, years of leading scientists and getting unique products. And I've just given a reason why we need to supplement. Many people fear supplements, but you don't have to. Remember even our children, when they are young, they are given multivitamins, they are given uh, fish oil. Pregnant women are given products by the gynecologist. So you need to know that where those deficits are, you, you need to have them. So uh, we need to write these uh, whole grain, I mean the healthy food pyramid. I, and um, basically I'll go one by one. One of the most critical things you can give your body is something called TRNN. TRNN is a world first. No other company in the world has it. And you can go and do your research. What does it contain? It contains oils from wheat, rice, and soya. And these products are grown in organic environment, tested in every stage. And when it is encapsulated, it's encapsulated in an oxygen-free environment so that you don't have to present preservatives. What does it do? It comes and repairs the damage already done to the cells because we are eating refined foods and lacking the oils from the germ that should keep our cells healthy. This cell membrane is an oil-soluble membrane and it requires lipids and steroids, which can only come from the grains we've talked about. So if you keep eating refined food, you can be sure that's an antidote. It's a remedy, it's a, it's a trigger to the challenges we are talking about. So TRNN will come and repair that, and eventually it will improve utilization of other vitamins that you're eating in the diet. It will help your cardiovascular development, and it will also optimize your overall growth and development as the years go by. It will open the membrane and the waste can the nutrition can come in and the waste can go out, including those things can, that can turn out to be carcinogenic. If they are not removed out of the system and they remain in the cells and in the organs, they actually become toxic. And when they become toxic, they become cancerous. And that's how now they continue messing us up. So TRNN is a must for everyone, including our children. We have the vital squares that have TRNN. So if you're here, you have brothers, sisters, children, uh, grandchildren, make sure that they are on vital squares as early as possible because that's a a, an endangered species of children who are eating a lot of refined starches. You remember me talking about um, the foods, the fast foods I said, Carotenoids, they work on the oily parts of your body. Any oily part of your body, the carotenoids will be there to work. And these are the fruits that come from the reds and the orange and the green fruits. And these are very powerful product because with all the carotenoids, it has about 115 kgs of immune boosting carotenoids. And in exactly, in exactly 20 days, if you're doing three of them per day, you boost your immunity by 37. Most people who have cancer bringing them down or the cancer tumor growing more, they are low in immunity. So you must increase your immunity and that's what it does. And it will give you other added benefits like for the skin, anti-aging, for the eyes, for the circulatory system, removes oxidation in the body. It just has, it has too many benefits. The second ones I told you are the flavonoid fruits and vegetables. You know, those come from the berries, the pineapples, the citrus, um, the, those that are a bit sour and bitter, uh, not bitter, really sour. 
and there are many of them, beetroots. And those ones, they work on the oily parts of the body, and they are also anti-cancer. That is something you need to know, not to mention the cruciferous. As the name suggests, they are vegetables that crucify those cells that could be benign or cancerous or any cyst that is growing in the body. You will find you're getting funny growths in the body, fibroids and all those kind of things. Cruciferous will help you do that. And it's very good for men and women because our hormones can go haywire. And for women, if you want to stay away from menopause coming early, you need to be on cruciferous as often as possible. And that forms a phytodefense. So the phytodefense is a combination of carotenoids, flavonoids, and uh, cruciferous as one in one packet. They are, they are put in a sachet, they come in one packet, but you can also purchase them individually like that. So these are very good for prostate cancer, cancer specific to women and any other cancer generally. Another thing that can bring uh, help to us is the herbs. Like feminine herbal has, it's a complex of many herbs that regulate a woman's cycle, very, very important. And when your cycle is not right, it could be a trigger to some of these challenges we are seeing. And the same for men, prostate enlargement, stress, you know, the, the issue of cleaning the kidneys, all those things are helped by those herbs you can see for both men and women. Then of course we have salmon. Omega-3 is a very important product for keeping tumors from developing and growing. So just know that omega is not just good for the brain or for the joints or for the heart. It also prevents the growth of tumors in the body. You can read more about that. And then of course zinc is very critical, why? Because zinc is an immune booster. And when it comes to men, especially, it's very good for maintaining, preventing the cancer specific to men, the prostate, and also even those already who have it. When they're on masculine zinc and omega-3, that really helps in the healing of the cancer they may be having. Uh, just to finalize, we are going to talk about, if you have weight, just go through the shake. And anyone already who has cancer, they are going through treatment. Remember that the, the chemo introduces some chemical into your body and it hurts both the bad and the good uh, cells. So you need to regenerate good cells and repair the damage already done. And some of those people lose appetite, they can't eat. So the New Life Shake comes in as a, profit, a protein drink to repair the damage. And so that the new cells being produced by the body they have been produced when they are healthier and they are much better. And you go through the treatment in a healthier manner. And need, this needs to start early. Don't wait until the patient cannot eat. Then you start running to find out what can I give. The minute somebody has started the, the cancer treatment, please put them on the shake, uh, whether it's the Nutri Shake or the Neo Life Shake, and it will be a very helpful um, drink to even give them the vitamins and minerals they need to nourish their body. You can read more about CoQ10. It produces the energy at the mitochondria part of the cell. Remember the cell, there's a DNA part, the mitochondria, the nucleus. Uh, CoQ10 goes to work on that. And we realize that cancer cells affect the nucleus. You also want to make sure that the stem cells that remain after chemo, they don't uh, manifest themselves again. They can start going into remission for many, many years. And garlic is also important. It's an antibiotic, natural. Some cancers are triggered even in the stomach because of those bacterial elements. Like when you're told you have H. pylori, if it's not taken care of, it can grow into a cancer in the stomach. So that is very, very, very critical that you understand about that. Better guard. This is, I think, the last product I'll talk about. When somebody is going through chemo, after maybe about six months of going through the chemo and radiation and all that, between after six months to a year, you need to give them a good regime of beta gut to help the body detoxify the toxins already settled in the body. Because sometimes those toxins, they come and cause other side effects in the body. So beta gut is the antidote that Dr. Fatma, ah, Dr. Sorry, Dr. Other Fasts uh, actually prepared 
as an antidote for cancer treatment. So that should be very, very important. And I want to end by saying, your health is your prerogative. My health is my prerogative. Your health is your prerogative. Your children's health is your prerogative, including your spouses. There are people who say, my husband will not agree to eat well. You have to find a way. My husband will not stop eating meat every day. You have to find a way. And your parents and the people around you, if we stick together, we are going to influence the people around us. You cannot influence the whole world, but you have a responsibility of influencing the people around you. Be useful in the marketplace, and this is something we can talk to people over and over. So I want to thank you so much for listening to me. And I hope that uh, the people on the call, we are how many? 185, that we can in turn go the next one week or two weeks, we influence another 10 families. That would be a thousand. And if you keep doing that over and over, and that's what New Life does. New Life teaches people about health one family at a time, one family at a time. And we are able to influence our circles of the people that are around us. You can't love people and you're not giving them the basic and core information about this. So I want to take it back to Fred Gishuki. Oh no, let me invite our the person who is going to almost close the event for us. And this is Dan. Dan Odero is very vast with a lot of information about uh, many aspects of our health. So over to you, Dan. Um, thank you, Gladys. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, Gladys says, <laughs> my name is Dan Odero. Uh, the first time, uh, the first time I came across Neo Life was when I was uh, living in South Africa. I'd go down to do hotel management and I was working there. And I was there for about five years. And when I was at that point is when I came, I came across uh, Neo Life and I learned, I learned how Neo Life, I learned what Neo Life, uh, about Neo Life. When I first came, I must say, when I first came across New Life, one of the things I was skeptical about nutrition. My reason for getting into New Life was mainly to supplement my income because at that time I remember I had to leave. I, I had left work. I'm a hotelier by training. I got so fed up of working at a hotel and I said I wanted a change. I, want, I was not satisfied and I walked out. So I was looking for an alternative income source. And so what I did, I got into New Life. Someone introduced New Life to me and I got in. And when I heard them talking about supplementation, I was skeptical. I was pretty much skeptical by saying, I think these <laughs> whites, Wazungus in their South are cheating us about supplementation. But I came to learn the importance and the critical importance of supplementation in our lives. One of the things, and as Gladys has put it very well, is something that we need to consider and have as a part of life. One of the things I also do, I'm a sales, uh, insurance sales advisor. And I have found that if we do not take particular care of your health, it will cause you problems in the long run. And the cost of taking, or the cost of, of the cost of uh, healthcare is, 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 is skyrocketing. And plus, in fact, when someone gets cancer and people are very afraid when they hear cancer, when someone gets cancer, it almost gets the a whole family, a whole clan, a whole, it's, it's a burden to everybody. And so costly, it can it can just make a, a a community destitute, family destitute, trying to treat cancer. Now, as as uh, Gladys Walter said, cancer is not is not contagious, so it's something that is got because of our lifestyle diseases. So we can do something about it. 
for me, as I say, my background was not, I was skeptical, but I found, I found with lessons I, by using, I found that it actually supplementation works. Supplementation is important and makes a difference. For example, when I get to when for colds and flus, just as a basic, because I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate not to have any serious uh, ailments, any serious, I am just fortunate not to have anything at all. But things like colds and flus, which are very inconvenient, I nowadays only just take zinc. And in three days, I have found it over the years, three zinc taken over three days, a high dose of zinc, 10 tablets a day for three days, 10 a day for three days, clears a cold, the flu, the, completely. It's boosting the immune system, it helps your prostate, but it also clears cold and enhances healing, especially after someone has gone for an operation. In the case of cancer, I've had some relatives who had it, but I've had some friends of mine whose youngest sister, the, the youngest uh, sister in their family, their friends of, it's a big family. They're all working in very good jobs. The youngest sister was diagnosed with uh, intestinal cancer and they had gone to the doctor and the doctor told them the treatment will cost you, the treatment will cost you a million shillings in a month. Now, they were, the family, I mean, they were all working in very good jobs. The brothers were all working in very, very good jobs. But a million a month that they went to pay in treatment was something they found extremely uh, quite costly and they didn't know how to handle it. So they had had, they had because I've been in the business for some time, uh, now 25 years, they came to me and says, is there something that this company can help you with? You've had a lot of the company. Is there something that can help us, help our sister? I said, there is, but I don't want to go against what the doctors have said, because we are not doctors. And we never, we never discount what a doctor has said. If a doctor has come up with a treatment, go with what a doctor says. But Neolife has also got a health professional counsel, certain doctors who can speak with authority of what the supplementation can do. So I refer them to somebody who was at one on the health professional council, a doctor who was in Kenyatta, uh, Dr. Fatima Abdallah. I said, this is what I could recommend. I, this is what I recommend, but first talk to her. Let her, let her guide you properly. Because me guiding as, an, as a lay person in a serious illness like cancer would not be, it's, 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 not, it's not right. It would, would be very right. So we, Said, I said, contact the doctor and I, I talked, I, I referred them to Dr. Abdallah. When Dr. Abdallah had said that they need uh, chemotherapy, she said, do not go for the treatment that the doctor said. You can take the phytodefense product from your life. This is as good. That's from a doctor, not from me. Dr. Abdallah uh, suggested. So they came back to me and they bought the product. Now remember that the treatment was going to cost them a million in a month. The phytodefense is a, is a pretty pricey product, but phytodefense costs you a, a little more than 10,000 shillings a month. So they took, they did not go for the treatment, but they took the, the, what the, doc, the uh, first doctor had said, they came and took phytodefense. She bought phytodefense and they took it for the four months. The young girl took the phytodefense for four months. After four months, and this is from actual checkups, not from me, from checkups and what they came back to tell me. After four months, they could, then when they went out for a checkup, the doctor said, you, don't, you didn't come back for treatment. Why did you come back? Come on, let me check you. It must have gone bad. They couldn't, he couldn't find the cancer. So they spent about, in four months, spent about 40,000 as opposed to a million in a month. And that was the case. This is a case that I'm, this is an actual case. And the lady said, the, the doctor after checking said, we cannot find the cancer any longer. It goes, sometimes when I suggest products and sometimes some of us who are, who are in the business suggest products, people, people say they are too expensive. Compared to what? How do you compare 40,000 in four months 
to 1 million a month. What is the comparison? Some of the things when you get sick, treatment is expensive. People will look for insurance and then in insurance sometimes says, I cannot help you know because it's so expensive. Sometimes prevention is a lot, a lot cheaper than going to cure. And if you can prevent it, all of us know that cancer, we're all prone to cancer. All of us are prone to cancer. What are you doing about it on a day-to-day -day basis? Eating, yes, but what are you doing on a day-to-day -day basis? The products have a guarantee from human trials over years that these things help to slow down, to slow down. So why not go with something that has been tried and tested over years and see how it can work? A company, there are many companies out there, some people say there are many companies, there are many supplementation. Some people are skeptical because others do not give you, they say one thing, but they don't give you what they say they do. Neolife always gives you, or the cases after case, they give you things that they say, they work. It's been tried and tested. I have seen client after client comes back and tells me this worked. Some clients have gone into chemists sometimes and bought things and chemists because they were looking for something cheaper. They go back to the doctor, the doctor says, why aren't you taking? He says, I am taking, but there's no result. When they came and they come now to Neolab and ask us for some for, for what we have, which is more pricey, but works. And at the end of the day, what are we looking for? Uh, something that is cheap and doesn't work or something that is a bit more pricey, a little bit of, but works. You're, you're sure that it works. This is what I have found over the years. I would urge you, do not turn us, do not, when someone comes and offers you, do not just turn away, do some studies. As that is says, do some reading. But look at the cases over years. We've been in this country for 25 years. New life has been around for the last 60 years. Tried and tested. We're not just telling stories. These are actual facts. I hope this will be something enlightening and we can then take care of health better and help us a little bit, help the families. We're looking to have a healthier and happier world for people around us. Don't keep it to yourself. Tell others. Some people are suffering and we have the solution that we're not keeping quiet. Please tell others. That's it for me. I'll hand it back to Gladys. Thank you, Gladys, for this opportunity. Thank you, Dan. That was awesome. Um, th there are many people who can tell you many testimonies. But uh, let's not go into that for now. We've even had someone who gave us her testimony, having her gone through breast cancer. She's in Nakuru. Uh, so over time, as we keep interacting, those are things that you're going to hear a lot. Over to you, Fred. Please close for us. Thank you, and God bless. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, Gladys. Thank you so much, Dan. You guys have outdone yourself. Let me tell you. I was listening here and taking notes and really getting excited, taking screenshots. And uh, I mean, the session was just on fire. The kind of information you've given is just amazing, amazing. Guys, you are getting all this free of charge courtesy of Neolife International. And uh, you have a chance to participate with Neolife. I would urge you to become a member of Neolife. Even if you're not going to go do it for the money, do it for the sake of your health. Start taking care of your health now. Uh, don't leave it to chance. And I know that you will be thankful for the investment of getting into new life. Apart from the health part, there's also money involved. You'll make a lot of money from new life. You'll get to travel the world and the benefits are endless. New life is a total value opportunity. So for the guests, talk to the person who invited you. Uh, ask him uh, two things. You can ask him for a form, fill it, become a member, or you can ask him for the products that you'd like to take either to prevent yourself from cancer or to manage the condition if you already have it. And I tell you, you'll be excited about it. Others, it's been great having you guys on board. I wish you a restful evening. I will be having this recording later in the day um, and you can also, you can get it from the person who invited you. Thank you so much. God bless you. See you next Sunday when we'll be having a different topic on health as we continue on the mission 
to make the world a healthier and happier place. Thank you and bye.